The East is where we're from The twelve tribes of Israel In 721 BC The Assyrian king He took us down, we fell <laughs> With the great escape we went Through the Euphrates The Lord held the water still To a land where no mankind dwelt We went The twelve tribes of Israel That's who we be, we be Manasseh, the Cubans Come on Ephraim, from Puerto Rico And the islands of the Hawaii The Lord is calling back Israel Zebulon, from Panama Yeah, the North American Indians, Syria, the Dominicans, the highest gathering is Israel. The Arabs and Africans told us, at good point, to gather our wives and children and sold us. In the belly of these great ships, we traveled in here. By the rivers of Babylon, we found our brothers here. A high gatherer Asher in Columbia oh. Ruben from Australia mm -hmm. It's a cop, the Mexicans A high gatherer oh. is right here Children, the Negroes Benjamin, the West Indians Levi, the Haitians A high gathering is right here Come on, bro and sisters the most high is gathering israel i'm elder rikosh yar of the gathering of christ church i see some familiar faces in the building first of all i would like to say all praises be to the most high again ahaya bahashim yeshaya wager walk i am elder rikosh yar of the gathering of christ church here with a new installment of what the mark of of the beast report okay now i do apologize some of the videos that you all may uh you may have come accustomed to to view in here since the beginning of patreon some of them are no longer on the page okay and it's because um under patreon guidelines i guess under the pandemic uh there's nothing that we could say that that uh put out there to dissuade people from what their own as they claim uh decision when it comes to medical medical attention they cannot be swayed one way or the other outside of what's out there as far as mainstream so if we talk about it tentative tentative tentatively okay If we speak about it tentatively, then okay, uh, but we it can't be as if we're persuading someone not to make a choice that they deem could save their life under this as far as medical help goes. So we're going to leave it there, but we can still teach the truth, the Bible, and touch on what? <laughs> the mark of the beast, okay, and where things are progressing as far as the Most High is concerned, according to the word. 
and guide those who would seek the truth with the word. Okay. Okay. I see some new people in here. Shalom, Larry. How are you? Okay. If you may, I need you all to at least put something in the chat for those who are present. Okay. Put something in the chat as far as I let us know you're out there so I can interact with you uh, right now. Uh, let me load the comments. Of course, it's a lot different than uh, what what uh, we've all. Uh, let me see. It's a lot different here on Patreon as far as the uh, the layout. Uh, YouTube is way more transactional as far as the chat goes. You're just chatting and interacting. All right. So unless you load more comments. OK, so you can put comments, hellos or whatever in the comment section. But in order to see more, you must hit reload. OK, load more. OK, OK. We have Yashaz. How are you this so-called Friday morning? It's me. How are you? Um, Shawana, Larry, Jennifer, Cousin Esau. <laughs> OK. Cousin Esau, Roosevelt Middlebrook, Tyrone Ford. How are you, Tyrone? Uh, and uh, T Honey. Oh, yeah. Someone says, did they get um, Patreon too? Well, listen. Under the B system, really, uh, there's not too many uh, social platforms they can't get to. And the only reason why is because under FCC compliance, in order for a lot of these other platforms to actually uh, operate, they must be under some level of compliance with FCC. So that's that back door way of making sure that, you know, <laughs> that if the company want to continue to thrive, they must comply to some degree. So I'm going to I'm going to respect Patreon's uh, wishes. We we complied with their wishes to take some of the stuff down, but it's not going to preclude us from breaking down this truth and giving you the information that's needed. All right, because we are going to touch on the mark of the beast all through this. And I'm going to open up lines five one five six zero five nine three two seven in a moment to discuss this. OK, let's jump right into it. Which is really our fifth weekly mark of the beast report okay now i need y'all to all check this out and make sure that when you get this information you let you let families know let the people know who, who, who are not on patreon you know what's really going on okay the world is in some serious serious trying times and on top of that we're in what second baruch calls the stupor and one of the events or prophecies within the stupor, brothers and sisters, is confusion. Confusion. So it's no coincidence that at the same time the Most High said we would be in a stupor. Now it's the powers that be, it's their opportunity to seize full power while the whole earth is in utter chaos and confusion order out of chaos order out of chaos which is the new world orders motto they create the chaos i wouldn't say they create it they create the scenario in which people will voluntarily participate in the chaos see they create the stage they're not forcing anyone to do anything the tree of good and evil wasn't forcing Adam and Eve to do nothing. See? But the stage was set for them to, to make a choice, to indulge in the chaos. Now, some people might ask, well, break that down, Rekar Shah. What do you mean by that? Well, Christ tells us in the Bible that light and darkness has no union. Neither is there union good with evil. So you're either on one side or the other. But suppose someone put a choice in front of you to have it where you can flawlessly operate between the two and be absolved. 
See? <laughs> now, when light, when when when, when uh, truth and when truth and lies or good and evil coexist together, it makes something. Just like when 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 male and female come together, it produces something. Well, and when good and evil comes together and operate in itself, it becomes chaos. And the chaos leads to death. So the Illuminati, whoever you would like to call them, I would say servants of Satan, ministers of Satan, have set up Babylonian systems in which, that's right, the population of the earth, Noah's sons and daughters can now participate in this city made from that tree good and evil now let's examine it on another level we have two separate worlds right christ even told the disciples in his teachings and it and it permeated throughout all of his churches that one cannot serve two masters either you'll hold to one and cleave to the one and hate the other you must choose your master now if you choose Christ, if you choose God as your master, that comes with rules. And that and through those rules comes some heavenly protection and knowledge to navigate. But the sacrifice, folks, but the sacrifice is what? You cannot indulge in the evil or we cannot indulge in the evil like we used to. There's laws for protection, <laughs> right? There's laws for protection. Now, that's our master, the God of Israel. Now, a lot of the Gentiles under these religions have what? Another God who require obedience. And he, he, he requires Satan. He requires a certain honor system. Okay, on earth, there is an honor system under his good and evil. But there's other things that's required. Instead of on the light side where the righteousness is required by God's law for those who will be righteous. Satan require what? He require, that's right, a blood oath. A blood oath that that can compromise you if you decide that you no longer want to indulge in his tree of good and evil you have all the perks of this earth but it comes with a price you are part of his army all that okay you you can get a let me give you an example of 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 what i'm saying brothers and sisters we have to sacrifice our lives and can't indulge into this in this world like the rest of the world. And you know what? Because of that, a lot of us, you know, sometimes it may upset us, whatever the case is, that our lives and those who are in the truth lives are immediately what? Boring to some degree compared to those who it seems like are having fun. <laughs> right? Right? You see in the party and all these other things, and I'm going to I'm gonna show you how I tie this in what, into our topic to get today. The parties, the celebrations, the traditions seem like everyone is having fun. But just like our father, Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, nothing, nothing given in that choice with good and evil. Everything you receive under, under this master, Satan, guess what? It's for a price. And more and more people are figuring out under this, under this, what they call plague or pandemic that you're going to get a lot of things, but guess what? It comes with a price. So I'm going to tie it all in. Our God requires a sacrifice. So does the God of this world. Let me go to 2 Kings 17 real quick. I'm not going to be long. Not going to be long at all. And again, I thank you all for 
your participation and on top of that, your membership under Patreon. Of course, I'll clip some of this and allow YouTube to see some of this, but um, I'll clip some of it and put it out there in parts. But all in all, brothers and sisters, I'm going to save some of what we're doing here for you Patreon members. All right. Let me go to 2 Kings 17 to show you that some of what, what the uh, what the God of this world requires as far as sacrifices goes. 2 Kings 17 and I'm going to start at 17. Okay. Speaking of when the 10 tribes begin to go off our people uh, in Israel and began to worship Baal. Second Kings 17, 17 reads, and they caused their sons and their daughters <laughs> to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord for to provoke him to anger. So yeah, Christ and God, the Bible requires what? A sacrifice. We can't indulge like the rest of the world. But so does Satan. Because in order for our people to actually enjoy the free life that was provided to them, like the Gentiles were living. That's right. A system had to be set up where a certain number of children are given to the priesthood of Satan and in sacrifice. Even when the Gentile nations came over here, right? When the Gentile nations were placed in the land instead of the children of Israel, check out what they did in the land. It says in same chapter, I'm going to go down here. Uh, I'm going to go, go to, uh, let's go down to, let me go straight to it. Let me go straight to it. Let's go straight to the 27th verse. And the king of Assyria commanded saying, carry thither there one of the priests whom you brought from thence and let them go and dwell there and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom you had carried away from Samaria came in, came in and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. How be it every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. So they, so they had to show obedience to the gods they were serving in the world. And these are the Gentiles who actually came in and began to benefit on our land. The Israelites land. But what else did the Gentiles do? Heathens. And the men of Babylon made Sukoth, Banath. And the men of Cush, Kuth, made Nergal. And the men of Hamath made Ashamai. And the Avites made Nephites and Tartak. And the Savarvites burnt their children in fire to Adremelech. To Adremelech, the gods of the Sepharvim. Okay. Now, a lot of what I'm talking about here is what you'll rarely hear in Christian churches. Because why? No one wants to believe that a whole society of people, Gentiles, would, would stoop to such base levels for power. They would stoop to a degree where they'll actually deal with each other, husband and wife, in an agreement that the child that's coming in nine months will be given over in sacrifice, either to priesthood, someplace else. It'll be almost an adoption set up. Some priests, because how are you going to fulfill the, 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 the priesthood, the priesthood pool when their priests die? No normal people are going to just go and sacrifice children and all those things. So you have to raise up children separately to believe 
that that activity is normal. See, so this is how the Gentiles did it. They set up an adoption type setup back then where before they can actually grow an attachment to the child, they would give the child over to the Babylonian priests or the priests or the kings and the kings would raise them with the mentality to believe that sacrificing people and doing all these evil things are normal. See, or altogether, sometimes they would give over their child straight to the system and the system would kill them on the spot. Now that's too heinous to teach in a civilized society like ours. Now, even though we know these priesthoods still exist to some degree, uh, you know, undercover, but do you think this stuff went away? But now they've set up cushy systems that will somehow get in the way to separate the children from the parents, right? Now, if you can set up a system of good and evil and wickedness going on in a society that creates dysfunctional people, then eventually there will be a reason for the government to come in and say the child is better off with us than you. <laughs> All right. That tree of good and evil, boy, it's still working, right? Well, now the protective services are coming in because they're caring for the child and they want to actually come in because of because the means the meat the, the evil means in that house the house smells and the parents are all they may be on drugs and all that no one asked who created the environment where these parents would become dysfunctional like that but you know what that's right order out of chaos this system loves the chaos because it gives them access to children see they can't tell you that these are old biblical rituals and that the priesthood that is really controlling things need children. They can't tell you that. So they set an environment so that what? You got it. There will be a conveyor belt of children through the chaotic system they have set up that will automatically give the state or the powers that be power over those children to be able to do in large and mass in plain sight what they used to do in ancient times. Okay. Train children with reprobate minds to believe how they're operating is normal. Why? Because these children hasn't, haven't grown up to understand what normal looks like, what a traditional family looks like <laughs> to grow some level of sympathy and empathy in certain instances when it comes to protecting family because they don't know what a family is. Order out of chaos, Home, homelessness, the division of family. Folks, everything comes with a cost. Nothing is for free. Everything comes with a, with a price. And that leads us to where I'm going into now, right? How do Satan get access to children? Well, if you can incentivize what? Separate households. Move the man against the woman. Right? Automatically, that child growing up in that single parent home is disadvantaged. And the statistics bear out. That child is disadvantaged in comparison to a child that's built, that's brought up that that's brought up in a, a not a two parent household. That's how they usually twist that in a traditional household, not two parent husband and wife, male and female. Those children that are brought up that way are leaps and bounds above any other children. children and you notice the system all on TV, try to push what? Try to push some level of congratulating and, and rewarding single parents. You notice that? And they know that child is disadvantaged, but guess what? That child will grow up with what? A dysfunctional mind. If not dysfunctional, at worst, unbalanced. At worst, unbalanced. And now the system can play on that, th that, that imbalance. 
and use that child as an as a what a weapon against the righteous. This is why freaks, craze, perverts, everything outside of the most high now in the end times has been elevated over the traditional family. But I digress, which is a whole different, a whole nother report. <laughs> I'll go into that next week, right? I'll go into that next week. Um, but let's go now. Let's talk. Let's talk. One moment. Let me load more comments. I thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's jump right into it. Our topic today. The homeless phase of the mark. The homeless phase of the mark. Now, some people might ask, Elder Rikoshiar, what do you mean by the homeless phase of the mark? Hold on, that's Elder Gabar. I don't, I don't think he know that I'm broadcasting here. Let's see. Shalom, Elder. Yeah, hey, Shalom, Elder Rikoshiar. Quick question. Um... Aria, the brother who gave me the gift was Aria, Elder Aria from Texas. You want to make sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Elder Aria from from uh, Elder Aria from from Houston. Houston, Texas. Okay, Houston. I give him a call. Everything's good. Oh yeah, I'm broadcasting right now. <laughs> okay, all right, Elder. All right, I'll, I'll listen in. All right, bless you. Shalom. Right. Shalom. All right. All right. Yeah, he had he had no idea. I didn't tell anyone uh, that I was doing this. Um, now, let's go all the way in right here. Let's go all the way in. The homeless phase of the mark. Now, people are asking, Elder Rikashiar, what do you mean the homeless phase of the mark? Well, look at your screen. Look at your screen. Now, a lot of you don't even know that this news and these laws are being passed right up under your noses. And this is why this is this is why, brothers and sisters, we have to appreciate. Watchmen, those who would get this information and let you know exactly how do the laws that are being applied. Applies to you when it comes to what? the mark of the beast system getting progressed. Unless you're following legislation, you'll have no idea that everything they're doing with these news circulations will immediately impact you, right? So I always use this word navigate because it's a great word because we're not going to stop what's happening. But, but with watchmen looking at the news and knowing what to look for prophetically, it helps brothers and sisters navigate through it. Okay. Knowing is half the battle. Here we go. The homeless phase of the mark. Now the homeless phase does what? Well, brothers and sisters, the homeless phase phase puts more pressure on people who are resisting. It puts more pressure on those who might resist otherwise. Okay. The homeless phase. Now, normally, now I'm going to tell y'all right now, folks, and I'm going to let me look up real quick. This word. Mandate. Mandate. What does mandate mean? Mandate means. An authoritative command. An authoritative command, especially a formal order from a superior court or official to an inferior one, to someone who's inferior. Right? That's what a mandate means. Right? Mandate. Mandate. An authorization to act given to a representative accepted the mandate of the people, the people. 
The third definition, an order or commission granted by the League of Nations to a member of a nation for the establishment of a responsible government over a foreign, former German colony or other conquered territory, right? Now, but the definition we're going to go with is just the, the regular definition, an authoritative command, which is, which is over an inferior one. Now, now what isn't a mandate? A law. A law isn't a mandate. A law is the law. And that's that. Which means. If you break the law, you will go to jail because it's against the law. A mandate is when the authority puts out something and one voluntarily follow it. Okay. And they follow the mandate voluntarily. Why? Because that individual believes that that's right. That mandate is in their best interest. But this is where our people, especially the poor people, are getting confused. They're believing that everything that's being said out there is the law. They really believe that. But in, in actuality, the news circulations and others are telling you it's not the law. It's under an emergency act. But this is what we're under CDC and all this other stuff. We must tell you these things because why? If something is out there that can harm you, you should have the information to make to make the best decision for your family. And guess what? If following these mandates is what will help your family, then keep in mind, it's your choice following the mandate and it's not law, but it's for the best interest of you. They have the right to say that. See that? But a lot of people, because we don't know the difference, are acting on things as if it's law. Which leads us here. That leads us here. Like for instance, you have to understand, brothers and sisters, your constitutional rights. Constitutional rights, no matter what country you're living under, there's, a, there's laws that govern that country that, that the politicians who enforce or who are, who are supposed to represent the law. Okay stands for and must do what abide by they swore to abide by the constitutions of any country well they at the behest of those laws and so are the citizens when it comes to the freedoms those laws that's right affords them see now if you don't know what your what your rights are or what your law the laws that protect you what will happen? You won't realize when ma mandates or anything are rolled out that are actually having you, having one, just give up voluntarily the freedoms that protects you. See? <laughs> now, why am I going here? Because something is about to happen to our people who have no idea. You don't have no idea what's coming down the pipeline. You don't have no idea, folks. I told people last year when people when 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 um, when they were giving out those stimulus checks and all that. Be very careful in taking this stuff, because if we've known anything since the beginning of time, the tree of good and evil. The master of this world have never given people anything without a price without a consequence without you owing him back okay then you had people you had people in the hood running all these stimulus things and telling their family even if they weren't working hey man they just giving out money <laughs> they they were tracking every stimulus check every stimulus check has a code number to it to who it went to Knowing that if people tried to do this 
under some level of a scam, illegality, whatever the case is, that guess what? At the end, one would need to pay the piper. I told people about that, right? And then you had your PPP loans. Now, myself, outside of the church, I have businesses, okay? I have businesses, right? Why? Because what belongs to the church is the church. What belongs to the church is the church, folks. For the regions, that's why I made sure everything, the status was good, everything was right, so every cent would be account of, accounted for. If I get a 10% from, from somebody giving that to me, guess what? I have to pay taxes on that. That's money separate from the church. The church belongs to Christ. Okay? Why? You know how it works. If someone gives 10% to the church and says it's the gathering of Christ's church, they're able to use that as a tax write-off or deductible with their taxes. Okay? So that helps them. With Here it is, they get a deductible and all that. But guess what? On the other side, that money have to be accounted for. So I can't just take some money and say, oh, it's the gathering of Christ church. I'm not the gathering of Christ church. I'm an elder in the gathering of Christ church. So I keep myself separate when it comes to finances. It's a conflict of interest. If anything was to happen to me, uh, uh, um, the most high forbid, I just prayed it. I make it all the way through. And I believe if I deal with wisdom, he'll grace me to. But all in all, I'll tell you this. I had to have businesses and all those things. Why? Because I can't expect the church to take care of my family if anything was to happen to me. I have to leave something so that my family, my children, my family could have something. And even before the truth, I've always worked with music and all these other things and business. You can't have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of, of this. Okay. And not apply that to other parts of your life. Okay. Now I'm saying this to say that I have small businesses, right? Totally separate from the church. Okay. I can't, no, you can't do that. Okay. It's against the law to do that. Right. It's against now it's against the law to use church to do your personal stuff. You can't do that. All right. Now, during the pandemic year of 2020, letters were being sent almost every other week to have me apply for a PPP loan. I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. Do you want some relief or some money towards your business? No, thank you, because that's you under this circumstances of panic going into business with a partner you don't want to be, be partners with. Because a loan implies what? That you are a debtor to a separate entity. So doing all chaos, they all oh, regular money coming out. Do you want to apply for a PPP loan to sustain your business during this time of, of, of uncertainty? No, I said, no, I'll stick it out. If this year or any other year affects my businesses, okay, whatever, right? But I wasn't going to go into business with a partner because that's what you do when you take a loan. Who's going to look to collect at the end of it. Then they would have PP loans and it, it, you had people out there without businesses in the hood, in the hood, folks, getting PPP loans. OK. And, and, the, and those that are giving you loans aren't under the rules of the Bible. Forgive your debts. <laughs> Forgive your debts as we forgive our debtors. No, that's the Bible. That's the Hebrew law where every seven years, if you someone was in debt with you, you would have to free them from that debt. Not Satan's, not this master's, not this God's world. Okay, if he give you something, it's for a price. So that leads us to 
the homeless phase of the mark of the beast because they set it up. They set people up, especially the poor, where they made people believe, brothers and sisters, they made people believe that you could stay in your house or your apartment as long as you want and not have to pay your rent. Now, what people was that going to affect? Who was going to take the government and others up on that? They knew this would disproportionately affect poor people. Because every other person who was who understood nothing is for free. Continued to pay their rent and their mortgage through the whole 2020, regardless of the panic that was out there in the news. People were sitting back saying, man, I never had this much money. I got PP loan money. I have stimulus money and I'm not paying rent, man. I'm stacking. And the devil is sitting there. His horns is hitting the ceiling, looking at you saying, you know what? I'm stacking too. I'm going to be stacking you on top of you, on top of you. See? What did the Supreme Court say? Because there was a moratorium that told people that they didn't have to pay their rent. The last thing you need to tell poor people, I'm from the hood, North Philadelphia, right up the street from Raymond Rosen projects. If you would have told me, man, I didn't have to pay my rent. Listen, I'm listen. I'm, you know, people was all, you know what our brothers and sisters were doing in the world under this master, the master of this world. They was at the club making it rain. Women knew that they had the stimulus checks out there. So they was, they sisters on polls. So I'm like, yeah, I know they got the stimulus having private dance parties twerking all over the place. People splurging, shooting dice. I know what was going on in North Philly. It was almost a, a, a Dave Chappelle skit. Y'all know that reparation skit that Dave Chappelle did. I'm rich. Yeah. Here it comes. U.S. Supreme Court in CDC's, listen, pandemic residential eviction moratorium. Now, we thought when Biden said, no, no, we're going to extend this or the CDC said that they're going to extend the moratorium. We thought that it would be against the law for them to kick people out. But there's three, three levels, three branches of government in the United States. Executive, legislative, and judicial. And either of these three told you, according to a vote in the House, that you could live in your home into perpetuity without, without getting evicted. The CDC told you that. <laughs> and the last I last I've checked, the CDC didn't vote anyone in. They just strongly suggested it. Right? And everybody said, man, Biden is the bomb, man. Look, we won't gotta pay rent. <laughs> Guess what? They knew the poor would do what? would take the bite from the fruit. They knew it. And they, they sat there, they wanted the, the longer they string it out, the more debt and the more fragile our living conditions would become in the hood. Now, here we go. U.S. Supreme Court in CDC's pandemic residential eviction moratorium. What does this mean for the poor people, folks? Our people. Because guess what? They sent me letters and said, well, you know, since all this is going on, you don't got to pay your rent or your mortgage and all that. Would you like relief? The banks would send all that stuff. And I said, you know what? No, thank you. People who knew better, who had the means to do so, continued to pay their rent. And I'm going to show you how they tricked our people. Our people weren't paying the rent and had the money to do so. They were getting stimuluses and all that unemployment and all that. So there was money to put something down on your rent. You don't have to pay it all, but at least pay it to a degree where it doesn't become what a liability later. So they know our people had the money. So, so this is what the, 
the news started doing. They started putting out stories here, then the other of how people were taking advantage of the system. Not all the time. They were just putting it out there the whole time so that they can collect later. Collect what? Let's get to the, uh, the ruling that was ruled from the Supreme Court. Washington, August 26, Reuter, Routers, Reuters, which is mainstream media, the Supreme Court on Thursday ended the pandemic-related federal moratorium on residential evictions by President Joe Biden's administration in a challenge to the policy brought by a coalition of landlords and real estate trade groups. Now, what they're going to try to make you believe, CNN and others are going to say, brothers and sisters, it was the Republicans. So this is how they passed the book. Well, Bi Biden tried to keep you in the house, but it was the Republicans who kicked you out. And wrong answer. No one can tell you to stay in a house and do all these things from any branch without it being voted on the house and agreed upon as law. The Democrats or Biden had no authority to tell under the legislate under this legislation to just tell people to stop paying your rent. Okay. He could suggest it, but in order for that to become law, he have to present a bill and that bill must get what accepted and approved on a, on a vote. But that was just a suggestion through him because he thought that saying that would be the right thing to do and that some landlords and others would listen to this and say, well, you know what? Yeah, there are people suffering. Let me lose my house or let me lose my property, you know, after going over a year without getting rent to the banks. He thought people, he knew, they, they knew this was putting pressure on landlords. So, yes. Out of the kindness, kindness of his heart, Joe Biden said that I extend what the CDC said. Okay. But now here it is the trick. Here's the trick. Now they knew that there was no legal right under the law for this suggestion. I'm reading it right here. The U S Supreme court on Thursday ended the pandemic related federal moratorium on residential evictions imposed by the president Joe Biden, Joe Biden's administration in a challenge to the policy brought by a coalition of landlords and real estate trade groups. Yeah. Because these guys are saying, if I don't get rent, I'm going to lose my property. Now under agenda, uh, uh, 2030, Somehow in this agenda that's out there, allegedly, it, it eventually under a socialistic type living, the majority of people in the United States will not have property. According to agen agenda that's out there, whether or not it's going to happen, I don't know, but I'm just saying that's an agenda out there and, and it's been spoken about agenda 2030. Now, I don't know how this is going to play a part of this, but people are obviously there's landlords and others are saying, I put a lot of money in this property. If I don't get rent, I'll lose it, right? So now they're passing a buck and, and trying to blame landlords. Turning what? The tenants against the landlords. When it was the people who voluntarily refused to pay rent. You see how they, they're pitting the, the population against one another? The justice who in June had left it in place pro a prior ban that expired at the end of July, granted a request by the challengers to lift the moratorium by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control provision, the CDC, that was to have, have it run until October 3rd, right? Which means, even if, even if, even if, Brothers and sisters, the Supreme Court didn't pull the level on this thing and, and revoke it now. It would have still been revoked by October. That means all these people who didn't pay rent would have had to pay the piper October the 3rd, knowing that they cannot kick this mandate or this suggestion, proverbial can down the road into perpetuity. They knew it, they knew this thing had a ceiling on it, right? And it says, the challengers argue 
that the law on which the CDC relied did not allow it to implement the current ban. It strains uh, credul- cred- credulity. It strains credulity to believe that this statute, see how I say statute, a statute, brothers and sisters, is not a law. <laughs> see, you have to look at these words, these legalese, that this statute grants the CDC the sweeping authority that it asserts. The court said in an unsigned opinion. If a federally imposed eviction moratorium is to continue, Congress must specifically authorize it, the court added. That's right. So now the Supreme Court said, listen, y'all have to deal with what? Y'all have to deal with the Constitution when it comes to, to to imposing on property. or what they would deem upholding freedom, justice, liberty, and the American way. You cannot press upon someone's property and have them lose property under what? Under a mandate, under a statute, under a request. He says, Congress didn't tell us to do this, (laughs) right? Then it says the three liberal justices on the court, which has a 6-3 conservative majority, all dissented. The White House said it was disappointed by the decision, which means that's right. The presidential wing of the three, the three winged bird. That's right. The executive, legislative, judicial has now been trumped. No pun intended. The White House said it was disappointed by the decision and urged states, local governments, landlords and cabinet agencies to urgently act. To help prevent evictions. The high court had signed in June that it thought that the moratorium was on shaky legal ground. Shaky legal ground. There was no legal ground for just putting out their blanket and telling people not to pay their rent. Because the poor was going to get affected by this. Our people weren't saving up for a rainy day in case what? In case the United States government changes its mind and say, no, nah. now, now all this debt. Now they know poor people can't go two months, three months without paying rent, without the threat of eviction. And you're going to put people under a one year, almost over a one year debt. So what will happen now? What's the consequences for biting that fruit? And that's such a policy needed to be enacted by Congress rather than being imposed unilaterally by the executive branch. The CDC first issued a moratorium in September 2020. Now, mind you, the CDC isn't any branch of government. They get the the authority to suggest strongly during a time of an emergency. But no one voted in the CDC. See? See? But I'm going to show you all of these components were working in conjunction for the outcome that's about to happen. They're passing the buck. The CDC says, listen, I'm not at fault. I just suggested that since people couldn't go out, why charge them rent? Why charge them mortgage? And then the and then those who own houses and all that was saying, well, okay, I'll take certain checks being a landlord that will give me some relief. Right. But these were all landlords getting what in bed with government for their, for government when it comes to their property. Everything I'm saying is what it is, (laughs) right? The CDC first issued a moratorium in September, 2020 after a prior one approved by Congress expired with agency officials saying that the policy was needed to combat the spread of COVID-19 and prevent homelessness during the pandemic. Okay. Under political pressure from Biden's fellow Democrats, the administration August 3rd implemented a somewhat narrower, a narrower eviction moratorium three days after the prior one expired. Liberal justice Stephen Breyer 
said in a dissenting opinion that the outcome of the, of the case was not as clear cut as the majority suggested and that the court was not justified in ending the moratorium so quickly at a time when COVID-19 cases are surging. Now, citing the CDC he said that a surge of evictions could lead to more infections of the virus. The latest moratorium covered nearly 92% of U.S. countries, those deemed to have substantial and high levels of coronavirus of virus transmission. The policy was challenged in federal court by realtor associations in Alabama and Georgia, as well as landlords in those two states. Okay, now, now what does this mean? What does this mean for our people? One might ask. Well, let's go over here to Second Edris. Let let's read what it says in Second Edris real quick, right? Second Edras read, and I'm at Second Edras uh, 14 and 14. It reads, let me put this over here. Mike. It reads, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction that draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their action shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You see how they are trying to set up roadblocks and all those things or not roadblocks, but you see those, uh, uh, those signs on the road. Okay. That if you ain't been tested or this, that, and the other, you cannot come into the city or the state that happened all the time during 2020. For there should be sedition. A man shall, I'm at the 17th verse, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So what happens hypothetically if for some reason certain parts of the population, city population, mainly poor people are homeless, losing their homes and hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. One second. One second. One second. So, I'm sorry about that. So what happens here if people, folks, are homeless after getting put out tent cities? You've seen that as a precursor of what's to come during the time of what? During the time of the election when in all the great cities and all the major cities in the country, they had tent cities out there in the midst of center city. All the major cities allowed homeless and others to be there during the riots. Remember that? That was just getting people's mind adjusted on what's to come. Predictive programming to have us adjusted to the sight of poor people living in the presence of the city. Now, what happens if, if one area is deemed quarantined because the cases are out of hand? Quarantined to the degree that no one else can come into the city because what? The disease or the plague has spread it beyond control. It's going to lead these people within the city under what? You got it. Survival mode. Now we, we 
There's a subculture in our community that exists that the excuse for our debauchery and evil and, 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 and self-destructive behaviors is always what I got to feed my family. Uh, you, we hear this from drug dealers and all that. Well, listen, what else I'm going to do? I got to feed my people. So imagine that mentality multiplied a hundred, a thousand times in a city where no one can come in to help the people because it's quarantined. Eventually there'll be a lack of bread and people with, with weaponry, with weaponry folks. under the survival of the fittest, praying on the weak. The Bible said this would happen. Man, it's cold how they're doing this. But here's the point that I wanted to bring out. And then I'll open up the calls. Man, second Edwards be dropping it. Then it says in the 29th verse, The 28th verse, behold the horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots and the multitude of them shall be carried as the, as the wind upon the earth. Now, folks, you seen last week or a couple of weeks where they were just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they came up with the an Afghanistan narrative now on CNN. Well, all you hear of Afghan and United Airlines sent airlines over there to, because you know, uh, the pilot, the Afghanis are trying to leave the city and all that. And America coming in with relief to try to help them and fly them into America. <laughs> all this ties in together, brothers and sisters, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, flying over into America. That they all that which hear them may fear and tremble. And also the Comanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of Assyria. And then shall the dragons have their upper hand and remembering that their nature and if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them, then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. Now listen to this, this real quick. Let me get it here. Right here. 39. And the strong wind shall arise from the east and shall open it and the cloud which be raised upon it in wrath and the stars stereth to cause fear toward the east and west wind shall be destroyed. The great and mighty cloud shall be lifted up full of wrath and the star that they may make all of the earth afraid. And then that dwell therein and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and, and, a, and horrible star that's talking about bombs being be, being strove throughout the earth. Fire, hell, flying swords, and many waters that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great water, tsunamis. Right? And then it says, 43, and they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. So at the end of the Middle Eastern Wars, we'll be hearing about Middle Easterns doing what? Being flew into Babylon. The Afghan, the Afghani narrative, the same times as the plagues. This is why they took out Second Edges out of the Bible, folks. It's, just, it's like CNN and mainstream are going <laughs> or are using all of these stories, which is actually paralleling the events in order from second Ezra. that these people are going to come over to America. The poor is already suffering, can't pay their rent and all these things. And then on top of that, you're going to bring in new immigrants where they're going to stay. And what ideologies are they bringing with them? 
So now the narrative may switch, we'll see, to the terrorism that was in, in Afghanistan has now resurfaced in America. You're going to start hearing that narrative. And then suppose those narratives begin to where they'll say that, well, this new group of ISIS-K or whatever they call itself has now began to recruit the poor people in the cities who, who have been now doing what? Revolting against government, mad against government because they've been kicked out. Now they're being recruited for the sake of survival, bread and water. And now there's a black group in all these cities. Black extremists in these cities now. See? You have to look for the signs because why? There's nothing new under the sun. Eventually, if hey, our people, even our people have set the standard, folks, of how to recruit these children. Leading back to the children of Moloch. Drug dealers are always able to get soldiers. Why? Because under the, this, the dysfunctional area that they created for us, there's gonna, always going to be a child suffering with a lack of bread. Literally. So that atmosphere has already been created through the gang culture, the drug culture. Where there always, is always another soldier and that these kids have come up to them because their mother was on crack, their father wasn't around. And now to survive, these children are being recruited into gangs or become what? Street corner thugs for the sake of survival. Well, suppose now Afghanis and all these other people are now over here and they began to offer our people what? Substance to live. You're going to, we may hear of all of these things as a result of what started in 2020, right? But here's the piece. Second Ezra 16, then I'll open up the lines. And this is why it was upon our pastors in the, in these churches. They should have been teaching this folks. This is talking about us at the end of the day. All of these prophecy leads to what the Bible calls Jacob's trouble. It doesn't matter. The events may start in China, may start in Afghanistan. At the end of the day, these are all plans to keep us confused while the directive for destruction are the children of Israel. This is why it was upon our pastors to let us know, yo, the Bible said this would happen. I'm going to drop this on you all so that we can navigate to it, knowing that there's nothing that can stop prophecy. When the Most High says something is going to happen, his word does not come back void, which means it will happen. We will die in number. There will be a destruction, but the watchmen were, were to do what? Provide shelter, spiritual shelter for the righteous and those who would choose the God of all gods. And not leave our people out there confused, giving them the choice for refuge. And that refuge comes with the knowledge of the Bible on how to navigate through trouble. Second Ezra 16 and 37, behold, the plagues draw near. The plagues draw near and are not slack. Plagues are what? Diseases. Diseases. And I know everyone want to highlight what we're under now, the, the, you know, the, the bear virus. But these, man, there's always been bad flus. Flus were taken out, out a lot of people before the bear virus. There's always been the common cold, which is the, the original, as they would state, base place. Hold on. One second, one second, one second, one second. Okay, is it charging? Yeah, it's charging now. Yeah. There's always been, brothers and sisters, right out. There've always been viruses. And you have to keep in mind, 
just like the flu. And they began to bring forth uh, what they would call, you know, the jabs for it or the vaccines for the flu. And every year there's a different variant. Therefore, each year they would suggest, okay, there's another jab. Well, there's the table have been set to where now we're talking about this particular thing, should, which is really something way different and more virulent as, as it was claimed. We can only after see the view and the patterns of how they dealt with flu. We can only begin to know that they could do the same thing with this. Where the same way there's every year there's a flu shot. Well, nothing now they can just do that with this too. So the reality of the matter is there's a chance that this will be with us, which is the campaign and all that, that we see like the flu has always been with us, with the same, what you would call medicines for it, for it. So I'm not looking for anything to go away. I'm looking for things to intensify. I'm looking for things to intensify. So because I know things may not go away, I cannot get caught up in the fear and what's all out there. I have to stand on the word and stay in the word and not be swayed through all of the talking. Because the more talking we hear, the more afraid we may become. And through that fear, we would make a decision. Folks, and keep in mind. Not once have the government forced anyone to do anything. Everything people, even those who've agreed with this and, and are following everything that, that they're being suggested to follow, they weren't forced. It's all voluntary. It's all voluntary, but what I'll do going back to my original premise for those who missed it, I got the laws of God and I have to understand the laws of the land. And when what I voluntarily participate with infringes on either of the two and use that in my defense to preserve family. See, I follow the laws of God. So I put in my body, I do whatever the most high say do according to and everything. I always measure with the laws of God first. The Bible is my rock. And then when it comes to my what constitutional laws, because I pay taxes. I have to know whether or not if I'm volunteering myself to something that's infringing on the freedom that I've paid for. <laughs> okay. So I measure all those things together and make a what? A conscious choice. I make a informative choice because if we learn anything with this, with this housing moratorium ending now, is that what they're saying out there can change every day. And when they change it on the other end, after making a decision, we'll say, well, hold up. You changed it, but I made a decision on what you said yesterday. <laughs> right. They can, when it's mandates and all those things that can change at any time. They can say, well, this, well, we, we implemented what we implemented with the knowledge we knew at the time. Now with this knowledge, it can be in a totally reverse, but this is what we're doing now. Progressing everyone towards what? Everyone towards a new world order. And with that new world order, only thing we have to do is go read the, the, the Georgia Guidestones. It's not like they didn't tell you what the new world order orders plans were. So you have to make an educated decision starting with the laws of the most high first and then any constitutional freedoms that are also agreed upon in God's law and not let anyone take those freedoms, right? But the powers that be aren't taking freedoms at all. The people are volunteering their freedoms. I need y'all to realize that. The people, not once did the government force anyone to do anything. <laughs> okay. So don't look at me 
If you went and did something or whatever because they were saying it and thought it was whatever, guess what? That's, that's between you and your fears. The government never forced anyone to do anything. Neither did employers. Employers never forced their employees to do anything. They told them about the mandate. which would put pressure on people who are thinking, how will I survive without my job? When your job, your job said, listen, it's a mandate. And another thing they put out there <laughs> about the FDA and all that, all you have to do is call and see whether or not it's FDA approved, but I'll leave that there. That's on you. Now, here's the piece that I wanted to talk about here. Second Edra 16, and it states, listen to this, brothers and sisters. For there shall be in every place in, in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For there shall, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses and do what? And cast them out of their houses. One moment. Let me get it again. Let me shut this off here. And do what? Cast them out of their houses. Mm, 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 mm. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. That's going to be the trial for those who claim they were down with the most high. You're going to have people who were strung along the whole time and did everything that, that they were what? urged or suggested to do. And that's what I'm going to use that word because no one ever made anyone do anything. It was a test of wills, a test of faith, and a lot of people failed. And at the end of it, you did everything they said. You didn't pay your rent. You didn't pay your loans. And now the landlord is coming to do what? Yank it from up under you. And you're going to say, well, hold up. You're going to take my living too? Then it shall be known who is what? Let me read it again. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear ye, my beloved, hear ye, my beloved. This is God, a higher speaking to us. Say of the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. The most High didn't give me this knowledge just to drop it for other people to say, man, this guy got some knowledge, man. He be dropping it. No. Nah. He gave us this understanding to have the knowledge of what's to come to navigate through it and get delivered. And as a watchman, I'm supposed to deliver that information because I know that with delivering this information the most high is going to what he's going to bring forth what he's going to bring forth a number of believe believers who 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 will help me as i will help you sustain through these troubles we have to understand who our friends are and during this trying time a line is being drawn where everyone out there you, you got to find out who your friends are because you're going to need your friends. And those that are making enemies, they're going to be out there alone and will not make it. So I thank the Most High for this position because in doing this, I'm seeing it all. And the Most High is not only showing my friends, he's showing me my enemies too. And there's no way everything we're preparing for and people that are preparing for and what we're dealing with. It's going to be for those folks 
who will come in and eventually they'll come in with that same mentality to destroy inwardly. I thank the most high for this moment because I understand that we were always strangers. We were always homeless and we were pilgrims in the earth. This tabernacle, we're going to be out there seven days out there on the land, folks, in preparation for what's to come. And guess what? We're going to be like that all the way to the wilderness. We were homeless already. And for the strong, we understand that this is one step closer to home. Once we become homeless here throughout the earth, that, that's going to be one step closer to Zion. But for the people that hasn't pre haven't prepared, they're going to fall victim to the beast. And because I'm going to tell you, Satan is going to come in with what? You got it. A temporal resolve. Well, I'll tell you what. You don't have to be homeless. We can come in and relieve this for you. We can relieve it for you. If you follow what we're saying, it because we're not going to force you to do it. And eventually you must take the mark of the beast. And you can keep your home until we require something else from you. And threaten your home again. It doesn't stop. Okay. <laughs> It won't stop. Okay, how it works? Yes, we'll come in and relieve you. No moratorium. We'll pay your landlords. We'll hook you up, give you a line of credit, money, all that. You want to stay in that place? Bow to Satan. Bow to Satan. And we're going to always keep this over your head. That if you ever step out of line, there's a chance you'll lose what? Your dwelling place. Okay. High, high level blackmail on the highest level is what the earth is under for those who can't see. Again, for those who missed it, man, I'll tell you, I love these reports, man. I love these reports. For those who missed it, the U.S. Supreme Court in CDC's pandemic residential eviction moratorium, which means all the poor people, our people who thought that they didn't have to pay rent and all that, not mortgage and all that, and thought that they, they was going to live and just pick up when the government say, well, okay, y'all can pay y'all rent now, are now under fire because once this happened, you're, we're going to witness eviction notices like you've never seen on the earth before. Tent cities all over the place. And then they're going to ramp it up and say, because of all this homelessness, who knows? They may say, well, now that the plague is really on the rise. Now the virus is really, these people are not, they living out there with no cleaning, you know, no hygienic, uh, 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 interactions. This stuff is going haywire. Who knows? We need to quarantine, not just a house. We need to quarantine a whole area from them. And boy, it only gets worse from there. Again, let me end it here. That was our report for the day before I open up the lines. Second address 16 and 72 for they shall waste and take away their goods. And cast them out of their houses. Mm, 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 mm. And cast them out of their houses. The U.S. Supreme Court in CDC's pandemic residential eviction moratorium. And for all of our people who thought that we had a free check through stimulus, we had PPPs that now they're going to say it was fraud and come against our people with that. More debt on top of that, not paying the rent. Now you have to go. 30 days notices, two month notices you have to go and let you pay back a year worth of rent. It's the Bible prophecy. It's the Bible precepts coming into fruition. Y'all, none of us just understood how they were going to bring it, but it's here. It's here. It's here. The mark of the beast pressures are on. And keep in mind, I'm going to say it again. The government, the news, the CDC, your employer, your doctor, 
No one forced you to do anything. During this whole thing, there was never a time where someone said you better do this or that. Everything that people have complied to up until this point was total complicit. Voluntary. So anything you lost in exchange, in exchange for your freedoms, your sovereign freedom under God, and even the sovereign freedom on the land that you've paid taxes for and built. Okay. Even those laws, you chose your choice and mandates over those. And that's all I have to say on that. Then shall they be known who are my chosen after being put out of the house. The Bible said it would happen. The Bible said it would happen. And now we're here. Mm, 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 mm. To try the chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. And hear ye, O my beloved, say of the, say of the most high, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. Navigate. <laughs> That's where I got the word from. The Most High will guide us. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Most High God, Ahia. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Because in an opportunity... When all that stuff was going on last year, the wicked became more wicked. Sinners had more money and all that didn't have to go to work. And they didn't take time to reflect and get their houses together and say, you know what? It's time to bunker down and hunker down for the most high. They took that as a space, freedom, liberty to do more wickedness. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be to them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities like as like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through it is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed there with hey we told you it was coming and here we are. That concludes our last week. I mean, our, our, this week's report. Mark of the beast report, the homeless phase of the mark. Hold tight. And I'm going to, I'm going to answer the phones. One moment. Let me, let me pull up the phones here. Talk. Here we go. Okay, go live. Present time. Okay, one moment, y'all. Let me go. All right. Log talk. All right, I'm going to open up the lines in the studio here. All right, let me open it up. Go live now. Yeah. All right. The homeless phase of the beast. Hold on. Let me type it in here. The homeless phase of the beast, wake up, Israel. All right, here we go, Israel. 
hopefully uh blog talk doesn't mess me up here like it did the other day it just went blank but it's messing up here but it's okay we'll pray through it one moment The highest calling back Israel. Whoa, okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, let's do it. All right, 515-605-9327 for those who would like to come in, okay? Blog talk. Can't do it that way. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. I'll do it this way here. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please enter your host pin. When finished, press the pound key. All right, one moment. The PIN you entered does not match the PIN you have on file for your account. Please re-enter your PIN. All right, one second, y'all. All right, uh, let's see how we're going to do this here. Let's see. All right, all right, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. I got it. All right. To start your show now, press 1 to hear important... Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Okay, for those who would like your to... Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, great. We're live with Blog, Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio. We're going to keep it on the topic, please. I can only take a few calls, uh, so we're going to keep it on topic. The homeless phase of the mark. I'd like to thank you all for being loyal Patreon members which support the church. Tell your family about it. I'm going to be covering information that's seldom touched on in detail through YouTube, okay? I'm going to save a lot of that for here, okay? And the Academy. So, 714 area code, okay? Shalom, 714. Shalom, how you doing? I'm doing well. The floor is yours. Name and location? Uh, brother Darrell, San Antonio, buddy. Okay, shalom, brother. Yeah, it, hey, you see what with the topic, the homeless phase of the mark. What say you? Sure. Um, I just had a question. Have you heard of the movie called Cell? Cell? Um, yeah. Have I, uh, who starred in it? I think it's something familiar, but, but go ahead. Uh, I think Sam, I heard Samuel about Jackson. it. I heard about that at a time in that movie where uh, they're at an airport and I didn't see the movie, but I know it's connected with cell phones. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, kind of. So um, when you get a chance, it came out in like 2016. Um, so what happened was everybody had a frequency that played on all of their cellular devices. Uh, and once you heard it, it triggered something in your head and you would go crazy and start killing everybody who wasn't affected by it. But the thing in the movie is there was 5G towers all throughout the movie. Okay. And um, also, yeah, and, and what, what I realized was everybody that was affected was actually the people who took the stuff. Because there was one guy with a red hoodie on that the, the star kept having a dream about, but he can see through everybody's eyes who was affected, and he could project his message through their mouths. You get what I'm saying? So um, it's, a, it's a very, very deep movie, and um, it got a lot to do with what's going on now. But if you do get a chance, um, I meant to tell you this the other night, but uh, definitely check that movie out. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on my, uh, my list of, 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 of movies to look at. I really appreciate it, brother. It's called The Cell. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, it's, it's free uh, on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Thank you, brother. And I think, yeah, I think uh, your rock put me down with it, but I never had an opportunity to sit down and and actually uh, view that. So, 
I'm going to put that on a list of many things, but yeah, I have to see that because usually they give you some information through predictive programming on what they're planning and what they'll do in the midst of those events. Uh, 432 area code. If you if you want if you have something to say online on Blog Talk, please hit the one. Hit the one. I'm sorry, four three two. Uh, there's a lot of kids going on back there. Uh, someone took someone's cookie, so get that get that together. If you have c- question or comment, hit one. Hit the number one in Q, so I'll know that you have a question or comment. Okay. All right, 252 area code, 25, okay, 432 area code. They hit the one. All right, great. 432, you're I'm live. I'm back, I'm back. I got, Shalom, Elder, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Your name and location? Christian in uh, Texas. Okay, the floor is yours, Chris. That movie, The Cell, you should definitely watch it. I watched it about two months ago. Two months ago, that movie is on point to exactly what's going on right now. So definitely check the movie out when you get a chance. I'm, it's on my wheelhouse. Thank you, brother. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, you, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got cut off. Uh, what? Just to add to what? Uh, just to add to what? Um, to the lesson. Uh, great lesson as usual. Uh, thank you for bringing that out for, for the, the most congregation, high. so we can learn and and grow and uh, mature in this in this walk. Yeah. So thank you, Dwada. Well, thank you, brother, and thank you for all the support you've continually uh, have done with the church and man. Get ready because hey, it's your time. Let's do it. So uh, we're going to be talking Let's about gr- growing these men and, and 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 doing what it takes to finish. Okay. So, and I have one question before uh, I go. Would you be okay. able to tell me the locations in Isaiah 11, or is that specifically uh, at a right time in the right place type thing? Well, the locations can be easily figured out. You can use your Bible dictionary and see those locations. <laughs> I've tried for like Hamath and uh, like I knew Assyria was Assyria, Egypt was Egypt, but it was like I had to even asked one of the officers, but um, he knew a couple of them, but it was a, another like. The Isles of the Sea. I couldn't figure out if that was the Greek islands. Or yeah, if that yeah. Was, the, the, Isles, um, the Isles of the Sea. Or like North. The, Isles, the Isles of the Sea are the Greek islands. So when you okay. when, so when you look when you look at those areas, those areas, all those areas in a nutshell, to make it simple for you, they all border the Great Sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea. Every last one of them. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea will be the last, really, the last body of water. That's still, you know, lot living. The majority of the earth waters will be dead by, by that time. But the Mediterranean Sea, which is the Great Sea, will be the one of the rare bodies of water that still has living creatures and living life and food in it. All throughout those areas will be the gathering. After the mm. fallout. And this is. Is that an OK place to live after the war? You're saying that's an okay place to live after the war, the last war? Well, what I'm saying is there'll, there'll still be people living there. Now, when it comes to individual scenarios on where to go and what to do and whether or not I should sustain in a situation or a place, myself, I would never go to a place without that, that, hasn't, that hasn't been supported or, or the church haven't been set up. I would, I don't, I, I would never okay. roll, I would never roll as an individual. So keep in mind, the Most High tell us that in Jeremiah, that he would send out he goats before the flock. Mm-hmm. When, we, when we first went out, fled, went into the areas, hey, the Most High had a greater plan than even we were seeing at that time. We were fulfilling prophecies, setting up churches so that when it's time, we don't have to scramble and figure out, figure out where to be. It's the place we grew roots. That we develop friendships that we establish churches with. So what's to say you go into an area because it'll still be there when Christ returns, but there's no support group there. And whatever happens, you get in prison or hurt without any support, thinking that you will flee in trouble <laughs> when you end up running into running, run, running into death. So to sit there and look hey, at those I'll, areas, I'll no, no, not now. 
the reason why I have to say it that way, I'm not saying you would do that. Understand that when I'm teaching. No, I know you got no, people, listen, people yeah, that would. I got thousands of people listening. And if I was to say, listen, brother, here's the areas that will be safe. You have someone look at that and they'll look at those maps and they'll go and call me from over there and say they're there already. And I'll be like, well, I see you in the kingdom. Adios. Because we don't roll like that. So when people ask broad questions, because don't forget, when it comes to fleeing and all that, you have a lot of nut jobs and a lot of people operating in the spirit of, of wickedness and all that. You see what's going on over there in Jordan. That girl was never a part of me or the, mm -hmm. this church. But she has, but she and others has a concentrated focus. And I know why, because her daddy that rules this world, okay? But they have a concentrated focus on me because why? I Because I'm a key component in this earth, okay? When it comes to bringing forth this understanding. I understand that, I understand that what we're bringing, we are a key component on this earth when it comes to what's going on in this truth. What we was, we, <laughs> we picked up the plow and began to follow and, and teach this word. So I know what we're up against. We're up against the pits of hell. But the most I told Peter, he says, listen, I'm going to give you the keys and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you have to realize you got a lot of people out there who have went out there on a limb by themselves with expectations from us that wasn't under us. Okay. So what they'll do is in these countries, when you go in these countries, brother, it's a survival of the fittest. Now that you're not under a church or any, any level of, of union that support you, you got to survive out there. And like that, that's just that she got to hustle her way into surviving like other people. They mm -hmm. have to now use this fleeing as an option to get a cut every time somebody come around them. So that's what this has become for, for some people. So you have, so, so, so respect the fact that I'm not reprimanding or saying that I'm giving you the knowledge of when I put stuff out like, like that, you will have three or four people like her and like others who would look at that as what an opportunity to use our ministry to focus on people who are afraid or whatever the case is to financially grandize themselves for the sake of survival. You understand? Oh, I, I totally agree with you. And All right. To add to what you're saying, I read yeah. in the book of Jasher, uh, the people that decided to try to like pre-bounce before the actual exodus, they yeah. were all done. So I have no intentions on pre-bouncing. I just wanted to know, yeah. you know, when my, when the body moving. So okay. I, so I know when to be out. All right. Well, if you're in the academy, I'm going to share, I'm going to go down all of those areas in Isaiah 11. I'll do that tomorrow. No problem. Perfect. Excuse Thank me. you. All right. I can do that tomorrow. But I, you know, understand I'm guarded knowing, knowing the evils that people are using when, when it comes to flee it. They're, they're taking what I'm saying, but they're using it like, well, okay, if there's a number of people who are afraid out there, look, follow me, come with me. And now I can now set up and, and get a cut every time I, I lead somebody into, into Neverland and going to try to say a higher in your Shia just so that people that are fairly new <laughs> could loosely believe that these people had something to do with us from the beginning and they didn't. Uh, so I'm guarded. So that's what shepherds do. Shepherd protects the flock. They don't put out things where they can be ravished by some lone wolves out there who are looking at our church for opportunity. Okay. Hey, Elder, I, I want to apologize. I guess I asked a question uh, immaturely, you know, not really thinking about uh, the others, so I apologize for asking the now, brother, question, but brother, listen, I wasn't trying to brother, put listen, you in a defensive. Brother, uh, listen, you don't have you don't have to apologize. I'm not defensive. I believe it was a great question because I believe the Most High, okay, the Most High, you know, brings forth information because maybe there's someone listening who considered operating by themselves and going by themselves and not realizing it. Tell you in the scriptures, He didn't just send Israel into the land of Canaan. Joshua and Caleb sent spies into the land to understand what, what they were mm -hmm. up against. They never left the camp. It wasn't people randomly in the camp of Israel just operating for the sake of freedom or whatever. So that's why in Jeremiah it states, I will send you out as he goats before the flock. 
There's, there's a lot of things that are going to be going down in the earth that's going to lead to panic. If, and people will be reacting out there in panic mode. So there's a lot of splinters and not, not splinters, a lot of people circling and orbiting our church who are really not against our church, but season, but, but are looking at an opportunity to prey on those who might be afraid, who know that this church is teaching the truth. And we have a lot of orbiters. Another guy just popped up. Like I said, he's from Scotland, the young boy. He don't know anything. Okay. The, the boy's confused, but I don't even know the guy. And now he's in the wilderness somewhere totally aimed on me. And I don't even know the dude. So this is what happens. They, they can't get any type of traction alone, but they know they know that there's a large following of this church, but they're just too carnal to not understand what it takes to build something from nothing. When you're guided by the almighty, you can see something and, and make an opinion on it after it's finished. But by doing so, you don't appreciate it. You, you never appreciate what it took in the beginning. See? And that's why I wanted to put out there, brothers and sisters, especially those who are coming to the truth right now, a lot of people are coming in. Watch the orbiters who claim to somehow sideways make their self close to the gathering of Christ church, or they're the, they're the church verifiers. It's through them and their knowledge and understanding it, which is higher, obviously, that everything must be measured. Watch the orbit. I'm going to call them satanic orbiters. All right. Thank you, brother. Water. So, so brother, never, never apologize for, for an honest question. You don't have to explain yourself, okay? I got you. All right. Bless you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> Good brother, man. Good brother. 984 area code. Shalom. Hi. Hey, hey, Elder, how are you? I'm blessed by the best, and his name is Ahaya. Talk to us. Um. Okay, so right now as we speak, over in Australia, I don't know if you guys have been hearing about what's going on in Australia with the whole lockdown. So right now as we speak, they're gathering 24,000 children, and they're putting them in, um, like, this building on government property. And their parents are not allowed to go in there. These are elementary kids from all the way to high school kids, okay? Mm. Their parents are not allowed to go on the um, premises, and they're forcing the kids to get vaccinated against their parents' wishes. Okay. It's, it's, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's oh, a lot oh, of well, I understand. I understand you're dealing with a lot of uh, uh, what I would call excited emotion. But I'm trying to keep this. I'm trying to keep this Patreon page. What you didn't know is that we had to, as a church, we had to uh, take down some videos because why? Uh, Patreon said that some of Patreon Patreon put our page on hold because they said, listen. We cannot dissuade people from making choices on their own or persuade people. Okay. So the whole deal is we can talk about what's going. Okay. There's a lot of activity. Sister. Okay. I'm sorry, sister. I got to go to the next call. There's a lot of background noise. When you're using that word and saying certain things, you have to understand how it's going to affect our page. Okay. Yes. We told you. They're setting the stage where they can get children and separate from their parents and all that and do what they want to do. But guess what? They were able to do that over in Australia because years ago they were able to bring forth laws that would take away Australia's right to protect themselves, you know, with what legal protection to bear arms. When you take that away, everything else eventually folds with it. But thank you, sister. We're trying to keep our page, okay? And, and you know, we can bring forth information without being so uh, um, emotionally um, dramatic. All right? Uh, 406, but I thank you for your call, sister. 406. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. It's the Gathering of Christ Church. Elder Rakash Yar, how can I help you? 
Uh, yes, uh, Elder, I was calling to make comment on the lesson. I'm in Montana, and this is a very timely lesson. We yeah. noticed that uh, uh, with the mandates and everything, we noticed that the governor was not doing any mandates and how they come up with this board of the city commission yeah. to be over the health department. Uh, there is no mandates being pushed, but we have protests and things going on from schools that are still mandating. And I just want to say the water for your lesson and timely information, because I did make the move of pulling my son out of public school oh, so oh, that he didn't have to. Oh, let me stop it right there. Listen, I'm trying to keep my page, right? So, yes. so the way you say it is, listen, you know, there's a lot of crazy things out there. So I'm, I think it's more advantageous for me as a parent. I'm going to homeschool my child, you know what I mean? And, uh, to keep my child close, you put it like that, yes, it's something sir. that I can accept, you can accept. And it's not that this what we're saying persuaded you to do something with your child. We have to watch how well, what no, you say. Yeah. I, no, I'm just saying, sister, you, what you don't understand is that we're going through something with Patreon now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where, where if certain things are said, they can stop us from actually operating here too. So. Okay. It, well, let me rephrase that then for yeah. the sake of the page. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what, I was, what I was stating was that like with the, regular media coming out and everything coming out of there yeah. and then the lessons and putting everything together we made that sound decision and to see everything being t tossed to and fro dodging that bullet is what i'm saying uh with the different informations that's coming out of everywhere and i wasn't quite understanding how these laws and mandates took effect until i noticed these commission offices and everything being created around yeah. these basic settings of offices that we're all familiar with, yeah. or most of us. And I'm just <laughs> taking all this in, and I, I just wanted to say thank you for the extra information, you know, because yeah. a lot of this yeah. information that we do get is coming from the local media and the news, and yeah. it's not making sense. I can understand that, sister. So, and, and another thing on that is, like, what, what you're doing, it, you know, is to be commended. When I say that, when you don't know what to do, what what must we do? We must circle. Sit still. No, no, no. Yeah, sit still. But we should circle the wagons now. In a world yeah. of in a world of fragility now, where where they're teaching kids all types of weird stuff outside of your traditional religious values or whatever, it's time to circle the wagons. It means everything in my power will be under my control. My children under my control so i don't know what's going on out there in schools and all that but i'm going to make it where my children are as close to me as possible yes sir my family yes, sir. is close to me as possible it's about circling the wagon so sister i commend you on this so when you don't know what to do what 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 they did you know during the time of the cowboys and indians right they were surrounded on every it's side still happening. Uh, yeah, it's I'm still saying, happening we have so many children yeah. that are coming up missing Hey, hey, sister, it's, it's time to circle the wagons and protect our children with everything in us. If we don't trust the school or whatever the case is, it's your power to now come in and say, you know what? I don't know where this is going, but my child isn't going with it. Thank you, sister. <laughs> hey, I appreciate sister Wada, Elder. Thank you. Hey, you're in the bar. Great call. Great call. 816 area code. 816 area code. You're live. Shalawan Elder, this sister Tamar from Kent City. Hey, how are um, I you? I just wanted to say uh, thank you. I'm blessed by the best, and you know his name is Ahaya. Uh, great. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for a uh, timely lesson. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that, you know, there are a lot, there's a lot going on in Kansas City. I recall okay. uh, not too long ago, there was uh, thank you. the homeless people were camping. The homeless people were camping out on City Hall, on the front lawn of City Hall, <laughs> oh, yeah. because in protest of the but conditions sister, here. Sister, sister, um, but let me make that make make that clear. Everything I know, a lot of these, a lot of these things uh, are actually propagated through these organizations. It's not like these homeless people. Yeah, they, they, they're not organized enough to say, you know what? Let's all. If they was that organized and had their cognitive senses together. 
They wouldn't be outside homeless. Someone else is organizing that chaos for, as a protest. What we need to see is what laws, mm -hmm. come, what laws come out of it. What laws yes. come out of it? So I'm yes. that, that's why I want my brothers and sisters not just to be biblically sound when it comes to God's law. We, we got to understand the laws of the country you're living under. Because there are some sovereign laws that people died for, that our forefathers died for, that aligns with God laws, which, which protects us from tyranny. Now, if you don't know laws, you're going to allow these mandates to have you voluntarily give them up. So I wanted to put it out there. And when you understand all of this, it's become clear when someone is bringing what? In, H in Hegelian dialectic, bringing a yes. problem, huh. a problem so that we can react so that the same people who created the problem comes with the solution. And usually that solution ends with you losing a freedom. Just putting that out there, but go ahead, sister. Hi. Uh, so with that being said, um, I would, that's, that was just one of the observations that I had made. It's just yeah. kind of tying into, like you said, that uh, Hellion dialectic. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, uh, since um, we are, uh, seem to be ex exhibiting some persecution, now yeah. on this platform, if you uh, had considered uh, Bit Shoot and Rumble, which are free um, and don't seem to, and it seemed like a lot of the quote unquote truth community, uh, truthers are kind of on that as well. So I didn't know if you had heard of those. I did. Consideration, additional I, consideration. I did consider that, but I like, but I love the other features that Patreon affords us. That's why yes, I wanted sir. to keep this I, I because had noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of yep. features that Patreon. I'm like, you know what? We need to go there, right? Mm -hmm. So and, and yeah. it gives us gives us a greater a, a greater level of ex, ex, exclusivity, exclusivity, a, a greater uh -huh. you know. And I like that ex, exclusivity that's separate from these other just throwing stuff online and letting people see it. Nah, I love this. This, this exclusive ex exchange and what P Patreon has to offer on that. So, I mean, just tell your family about it. It's cheap to be a part of this. And it's really, you know, I mean, I love this interaction and, you know, you know, and, and I love this interaction. So, yes, I think she dropped. I'm sorry about that, sister. You dropped. OK, four, six, nine area code. Shalom. Four six nine area code. Okay, no one there. I'm gonna go down the line, take a few more calls. Seven one four area code. Oh, sorry, Elder. I was still on the call. We had already spoke. All right, I'm sorry. All right, let's go down the line here. Hit one if you would like have a if you have a question or comment. Two five two area code. Let me work my way up here. Two five two. Yes, hello. You're live with the Elder Ricardo and myself. You're live. Yeah. Yes, I was calling. Gather um, Christ Church. I, I know you said. Hello. Yeah, the floor is yours. Yes. Okay. Yes, I was calling. I know you said cell topic. Okay, I was calling. I have been following the church for a while, and where I live at, it's not a church in my area, so. I would just wanted to know how can I look up with the church? You sent an email to GOCC baptisms at gmail.com. Bat baptisms yeah, I had with an S. Now, how long ago did you send that email? Yeah. I sent it like last month, but where I live, it's not a church in my area. It doesn't matter. We can still set you up with baptism and get you led through our regions. So do me a favor, sister. Okay. Um, send me another. Send me another uh, email, gocbaptisms at gmail dot com. Put in the subject urgent baptism, and then and then um, within the content place, I've spoke. I've spoken with Elder Ricard Shiar. I need a baptism and a church family. The regional elder will contact you to get you into our classes that we have for those who don't have a locale at the time. 
and that will eventually transition you into a body once we're there, if one comes there. But there's things you there's things you could be participating in now, even outside of a locale. Okay, you don't want to miss out miss out on those things. Okay, and baptism, you definitely don't want to miss out on that. So uh, we need to deal with that first and get you in transitioning in, so that when a local body is there, you'll have a place to go. Or in a state of an emergency, you can be guided through the regions. Okay. Okay, I appreciate that. You welcome. Right. Thank you, sister. Thank Bless you. you. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. Two one six area code. Uh, hi, Elder. How are you? I'm doing well, but, I'm, but there's a but there's a but there's an echo happening. Can you can you turn your speakerphone off? Uh, yes. Is this better? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to get in contact with you for a while, Elder, and I just wanted to know that I am a peril. Do you have anything like business cards or something like that? Because I actually talk to a lot of people because uh, I like drive all over the world. I drive for Greyhound and they hear your lesson the same time I do because I actually play it on the speaker on my bus. Okay. And people are listening. People are listening and they've been saying, who is that you're listening to? Who is that you're listening to? And, I, and if, if I could order some business cards from I Am Apparel when I get off the bus and people ask me, who are you listening to? I could actually give them a card to your website or whatever. So do they have anything like that at I Am Apparel? Okay. Now, not I Am Apparel, but Gathering of Christ Church. That's a good idea. Maybe we can make out some Gathering of Christ Church business cards and have people be able to get them in bulk. And we can just make, we'll pay for it and send them out. As long as the postage on your side, we can give them to you. And you can give them out so that they'll know where the site is, where to find us. Flyers and business cards. That's something that we'll, I'll definitely put on a docket, sister. Definitely. Great idea. Yes, I would love that. You know, I would, I would even pay for it myself if necessary because, like I well, say, a lot of people just like what I listen to when I'm on the bus, you know. Okay. Well, as long as we have postage, you know, you, you, as long as you take care of the postage, we'll send you a, a pack of them. We have the printers and all that. We might well put those things to use to actually get the word out. So you suggested that. We'll make it so. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. Thank you, Elder. You're welcome. All Thank right. you. Be Great blessed. idea. Thank you, sister. Great idea. All right. Please, you know, I understand you had an idea, but I would like to keep things on. Uh... Great idea, though. 412 area code. Let's go. 412. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. Was you oh, chest on or no? Elder. Were you chest on? All right, now, floor is yours. Your name, sister, and location? Uh, 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 Sharina Pixburg. Okay. All right, the floor is yours. Uh, I just, I just have a, like, uh, this, you know, great, great lesson today, and as well as Wednesdays, as always. Praise the most. So my, high. my comment is, is uh, I was listening to the book of Adam and Eve last night. And yeah. uh, I'm just thinking, like, uh, pretty much how, how they got kicked out of the garden eating is pretty much how we're going to have to operate when we get kicked out of Babylon. Okay. And just constantly, like, talking to the most high, like how Adam and Eve was, you know, in communication with them, even though they was kicked out of the garden. Well, that was more from an individual basis because they were just, they were the first two people. I understand that huh. get, staying connected with the Most High, but that connection starts here. Because once the huh. disciples received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, on the day of first fruit, it made it where all people over the earth, no matter where, can now have access to the Most High and thought conversation. And our conversations now are the conversations that continues beyond here. So I understand what you're saying, mm-hmm. but you have to understand that that was a different time and a different mode of communication when the gate of heaven was really right there. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, man was still able to communicate directly with the Father. But as sin arose in the earth, that communication has has become what? Has become far off 
There's a chasm in between. Just like if you start this way, a little crack, as you go further, there's a separation. A separation the further we get away from the beginning. So that communication isn't the same as it was with Adam. But through the Holy Spirit now, okay. how we communicating now through the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit is how we'll be communicating until we see him. Okay? But great point. Okay. All right. I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, is it possible, like, it, can you, like, smell spirits? Uh, I don't like, know. When you, like, if somebody's, like, walking past you or, like, going past you, you can, like, smell their spirit? Well, it depends. Like I said, there's different senses and different gifts for all different type of people. Okay. The sense of smell, the sense of sight, sense of... And I'm sure all of those things has some type of spiritual uh, uh, component to it. Um, okay. But I'm sure there's probably someone with those gifts who have a, a, a keen sense of smell or know when, when something, there's an off odor, you know, you know, a poltergeist type odor. I'm sure there's some people who can, who can sense that. But it depends on okay. the... And that falls into the, the the diversity of different gifts where certain senses, okay. people have certain senses and gifts with their senses. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm glad I don't have one of those because, we, because Babylon stinks as it is. Right. Well, thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I got the sense of understanding, right? You go open it, open at a Bible. And when I pray the most I open and understand, and I'm glad because I don't want my, I don't want no uh, odorous imposition going on in the spirit. I don't know what, you know, you know, so I'm good on that. Six, six, eight, two area code. Shalom, Elder. Shalom, you're live with the Gathering of Christ Church. Uh, yes, I was, I noticed when I read the book of Josephus, how hard headed people were. Um, God, uh, the Most High told them to scatter the land, and you know they they disobeyed. They sat and built build the tower. Then they end up having to do what the Most High tell them anyway. Yeah, um, it, it just kind of speaks to it. Just kind of speaks to what's going on now. Like a lot of people just don't, you know, they want to do their own thing instead of what the Most High you know, tell them to do. Hey, that's uh, what it, hey. You know, getting these people. The whole thing is, the only, to some degree, brother, I, yeah, I, I respect people's choices. No matter how, no, no matter how much I disagree and understand the, the consequences for them. I respect people's choices because the most high says what? Christ said what? either be hot or cold either be right. hot or cold and he says listen hot or cold is making a choice Satan made a choice and guess what uh, he's going to suffer for that choice and those who follow him so I, I respect those who make their choices outside of following God's law because who have to live with their choices you me no they have to live with those choices so I can respect it. At least they chose us. They chose a side. They chose a master. I would rather you outright show that you chose that master than hang around with me as if you're down with the God we serve. And like I said, even one dude online, he's attacking us now over there from England because he took the, he, he took the juice, and he's mad at me. I don't got nothing to do with that. Right. <laughs> but he he followed his master. That's the one here. All right. Thank you, brother. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. Great point. No problem. Next call. Next call. 302. Hello. Shalom. How are Bless you? you, Elder. I'm great. Uh, I'm Lydia, and I am from Delaware. And um, I just would like to thank you for all the edification. 
And uh, the topic was on point, the homeless uh, phrase of the mark. Uh, wow. I mean, you spoke about um, you receiving a lot of offers during uh, the pandemic. And I can um, definitely uh, relate to that. I mean, yeah. they were actually coming in the mail. I mean, even my car payment, they even wanted me to, like, not to pay four or five bucks of my car payment. And I was like, no. Yeah. And, you know, because I had the money. I mean, that is really being greedy, you know, when you have the money to, to pay your rent or whatever other bills you have to pay. Yeah. You know, do it, you know, uh, but a lot of us are so tempted and, and gullible and um, not paying attention. And that's what what happens, you know. And also, um, I would like to thank you for your um, 12 tribes of Israel uh, sweatshirts. I um, <laughs> I purchased like four of them. I brought my my two uh, sons and my husband and myself and i even purchased the mask for the female and the t-shirt and they are on the way praise so, the most time um, i am really grateful for you and um actually i'm originally from uh philadelphia uh south philadelphia okay and, I, yeah, um, I, get, I get that little philly that philly accent it's distinct yeah but go on <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, but, uh, and, you know, I pivoted through the pandemic, you know, because, like, the market for, for your homes, you know, like, people were losing their homes, and I was able to pivot to sell my home and get a great price and, um, and save some money, you know. So I was blessed by that, you know. Okay. And so, um, and, and also, um, I would like to know, uh, I live in Delaware, but I would like to, you know, attend some of your services. Okay. So, um, yeah, and yeah. I am, I am baptized. I'm baptized well, already. You're baptized in the church? Not your church, but through uh, another church in Philadelphia. Oh, no. You got to be baptized in the church. What church were you a part of? Uh pastor gino jennings okay that's great uh that's great i hope the brother do fine yeah um so so it's like this yeah. you, no you got to be baptized in the name of ahaya bahashim yashaya warriwak and we can baptize you sister don't worry about it come into the uh we have a great bishop here also uh bishop amath uh there's a program we go through where with the baptism we show you because usually in the church they dunk you in water not letting you know what you actually getting into how to sustain with this baptism. So we like to give people full mm -hmm. disclosure of what this mean, knowing that what okay. diverse temptations comes once you're baptized. So you're going to find it's a different experience here. Okay. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm not going to say it's better because I'm sure you were, you were up front and, 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 and true. To, to the baptism that uh -huh. happened under Jenkins. But the Bible tells you, even those that were under John the Baptist, when they met the disciples, they had to be rebaptized. Okay. So, okay. uh, yeah, we'll, and we'll do that for you. And if we have some people in Delaware that are part of the Philly body, and I think you can, really? I, you can travel to our church here in Philly. It's only, uh, it's about 35 minutes away from Delaware. So it's a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, I would love, I would love to do that. Okay. Um, what do I need to do? Let me write down your number. I got it here. One, let me write it down. Let me have your name again, sister. Lydia, L Y D I A. Lydia. Uh, last name Bath. Like, yes, L Y D I A. L L Y D I A. Lydia. Okay, I don't need your last name. I'll write down your number. Hold on. Okay. Okay, sister, and another point you made, yeah, they were offering me all types of stuff in the mail, banks and all that, and saying, well, listen, if you need a relief on this or that and the other, you want a PPO loan, like I said, I have businesses. The church is my main yeah. 
work. And that's, this is my business for the most high and sacrifice for the most high. But the money I make, right. and the, the money, my money is made separate in businesses and everything else I deal with. And uh, I'm going to tell you this, sister, they were sending all types of PP loan reliefs and all that, but they knew our people were going to eat that up. <laughs> and at the end of the day, yeah. let me ask you this. Did you buy or did you rent when you went to Delaware? I purchased this home. Smart. Okay. And the reason why I said smart, yeah. they're moving, th seem like things are moving into a more socialistic society where there's really a regenification of all the Western world and they're targeting America and you'll see signs all over the place. I'll buy your, your house for cash and all these things. Right. If, if you don't own your own, you have to be hest of the power structure. Okay, and the reason why they can't Say that act, again? You, you're at the behest of the power structure when it comes to your abode or where you'll live if you don't own. Because at okay. any time, things can change where your landlord may sell it to someone else and now it, you know, it disturbs the relationship between you and whoever you're paying your money to. Or altogether, right. something may happen where they, you know, where where now your landlord he can get a mandate and say well listen hey you can't live in my place because you decided to follow what they said and now i'm being pressured to make sure all my tenants are juiced right so i'm just saying it's best to have as much control over your life as possible and the major point about that is what? Least debt as possible. Least debt as possible. Wow. And make sure you own your own because this is how it works. And I've dealt with this on, on an international market system. It's smart because we're now under a world economy. Just say something happens where now you got your passport, whatever the case is, and you got to go into another country, whatever the case is, and do business. Now you have an asset that you can actually rent out or sell to parlay into where you'll be when it's time. Resources. Or you can turn yeah. it into tangible resources that you can barter with when it's time. But to have nothing, because keep in mind, either way you're paying, whether or not it's rent or mortgage. And I found that I wasted right. more money. I wasted more money paying rent than owning. Because yeah. what? Yeah. I was built... I was building equity for some other people who would leave property to their children. And I, I was looking up and saying, yeah. well, do I have anything to leave, leave my family? <laughs> no, yeah. I was, I was just throwing Absolutely. money. I, I, I was throwing money. Don't forget. Uh, even when Shapat was saying we was all living and sharing, we we're paying thousands a month. And just throwing yeah. it into a hole. And it was this Jewish guy we were renting from. And I'm, I thought about it. I'm, and looking at his child, I'm like, listen, this place will probably be his sons or daughters when they grow. And I'm just throwing money yeah. to them that, that ain't we, and, and that's not building any equity. So I just wanted to put that out there. We have to think smart. We're paying rent anyway. Absolutely. Why not pay something that you can use as an asset? Even when you travel, you can actually make something on to sustain you. Great point, sister. Thank you. All right. Yes, and one more, one more other thing. Yeah. Just thank you. Listen, just I want to thank you for edifying the passport as well because that made me go look at my passport and okay. it had expired. Great. You know, so and my husband's too. So we both went and renewed our uh, passports because that's that's a necessity too. That's Absolutely. important too. Passport. Great. That was smart. Yeah. That was smart. Thank you. You're welcome, sister. <laughs> See, they up on it. Bless you. Bless you. So, Lydia, I'm going to give you a number to Bishop of Moth. He'll call you up, okay? A matter of fact, I can do that real quick right here because I have so many things on my plate. My mind be all over the place. So, make sure I do this now. Uh, and then I can only take one or two more calls. Um, I thought that these things will be one hour, but you know me. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, okay. All right, there we go. All right. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, man, I heard Gino Jen is, is juiced up. He's juiced up. Now, may the most I uh, preserve him. Uh, let's see. I can take one or two more calls and then I have to call it a night, okay? Sabbath is coming in soon. 202 area code. Hey, Shalom, man. How you doing, sir? I am blessed by the best. And his name is Ahaya. Talk to us. Hey, uh, this is uh, Brother Jeff from uh, from the DMV body. Bless uh, you, brother. Just for, um, for the past, thank you, sir. Um, for the past, um, I don't know, for the past month or so, you've been really keying in on uh, Second Edward 16, uh, talking about the, uh, the stupor and the confusion, the great confusion, and how the plague won't be, uh, won't return. Yeah. Um, think, yeah, things along those lines. Um, just to just to speak on that stupor and the confusion. Um, just last week, uh, when they were talking, and I'm trying to guard my words carefully. I understand. Thank you. Protect the, 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 the parameters. Pr that. Protect my your channel. <laughs> you want to be able to have this interaction here? <laughs> yeah, but come on. Yeah. So, um, uh, so, 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 just speaking on uh, the the confusion, um, and the stupor. Yeah. Uh, for uh. Last week, they've been really keying in on, you know, people should do it. People should do it. So you understand what I'm saying when I say it like that? Well, 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 people should urging, go ahead and take it. Yeah, yeah they, they're urging the mandate, but go on. They're suggesting, right. they're um, suggesting just, the mandate. Go ahead. Right. They're suggesting the, uh, suggesting the mandate. Um, and then they'll come out and say, well, um, well, people that are, ha have done it, there's still, it's, it's still a chance for them to, to catch it. Well, yeah, and that, they were yeah, still, yeah. so with that yeah, going on. Well, yeah, they're right out saying, "Listen, just because you're doing it doesn't mean you won't get it." It's that's common sense. Right. Just because if I was to take right. something for a cold doesn't mean that I'm not going to catch a cold. It's just saying what they're saying is, what they're saying is, if you get it and come down with it later, you'll have less symptoms. That's what they're saying out there. But go on. Well, but so, um, so with that understanding. Yeah. People are still going. To, people are still choosing to make that choice to do what they yeah. feel as though yeah. they think they need to do. Is their choice? But just la just last week, uh, <laughs> just last week, uh, the CDC came out and said, "Well, look, uh, because at first they were blaming the the the, the, the so-called uptick in, in 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 cases is due to the people who didn't do it." Okay. But now they're saying the CDC, yeah, the CDC is now saying, "Well, the people that um that have done it, they carry as much." Uh, I think I could say viral load um, um, as, as the people who didn't do it. Okay. So my point is that, yeah, so my point is that there's enough information out here to prove that to, that, that can poke holes in all their narratives, but people are still choosing to believe the lie. See, but it's like and this. If that's not if, a stupor, br br brother, that is, but this is what I'm saying, and I'm going to, I'm going to say it like this because I've been, I've been really thinking thinking on this right and i'm, I'm talking about the the mm -hmm. prophet the prophetic the biblical the biblical impact and how we should be viewing this right mm -hmm. even before this those who didn't follow the most high has always made what unintelligent decisions so huh. this is so this is nothing different so all in all, we have to let, we have to let, the, we have to just let them do what they're doing. Because the reality is, and like I said, it comes down to this. And I said it earlier. The government, the CDC, whoever they are, they never force anyone to do anything. The president, right. the governor. Your, your, your employer, no one have ever forced anyone to do anything. So it comes a time where we got to look at it and say, this is prophecy. Right. People who haven't served the most high and haven't sought the most high are where the most high said they were going to be and are making the decisions the most high said that unbelievers would make. And we're, I'm going to leave it there. Right. 
And that's why I started right. this off with, and I don't even, even though I'm not even, we're talking about the homeless part about they shall kick you out and all that in the future. I don't, I, I'm off yeah. this stuff with the plague altogether to tell you the truth, because the reality is anyone who read the Bible would know what time we're in and would do anything they could yeah. to navigate through what? The B system. We have to make up in our own mind what components are a part of the mark of the beast plans. And at whatever components they are, it doesn't matter. I've read the Bible to understand what's God's and what belongs to this world. And a believer will trust on God more so than this world. Because again, the government, governors, all that, they have never forced anybody, even employers, they have never forced anybody to get anything. They said it's a mandate and th- and we're, we're upholding a mandate. And people looked at it and responded to it. That's their choice. They have to live with their choices. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, so it th- th- and, and, yeah, and, and, it, it, hold, it, hold up real quick. The example I gave, and I'll let you have the last word. The example I gave is mm-hmm. they can say one thing today. And as you've just eloquently shown, they can say something else tomorrow, but they have the right to do that. Right. They have the right to do that. They can, as, as information come, things change. It's the same way they can say, well, today's variant is one thing. Tomorrow they can say about a variant. And they'd be like, well, what I said concerning that variant is different than what this variant is doing. So they got the right to do that. Right. What I'm saying is people have to look at it and make a conscious decision on what's right according to God. Because it can change. Everything could change from day to day. I'm no longer going to be caught up into the wave of all the voices and noises. I'm hearing the most high and and, 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 and now I'm focused and will be guided by him. And that's why Christ said, huh. Christ told that rich man. I mean, I, I mean, Christ not the rich man. Christ told that man who said, well, listen, let me come get, get down with you, brother. And, 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 you know, I'm willing to follow you, but I need to go back here and, you know, bury my father. And Christ said, what? Let the dead bury the, let dead. the dead. bury the dead. Because the living would make choices according to what? The word of God. God. Okay. The living understands that living comes from and health comes from the most high. So the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. Nine times out of 10, you can't dissuade anyone from the decision they've made for their personal life and life choices. It comes down to it. I'm not going to shame people say, listen, that's your choice. You're serving your God. You're doing what's right for your home. I hope it works out, but you have the last word. I mean, just just to end it out, I mean, and that's my resolve on it now. Um, it's just it, it's a bitter pill to swallow. It's like um, my my whole thing now is that okay, I'm navigating just like you just said. I'm navigating everything um, um, based off of what the scriptures say. So if yeah. I, it, it, so if the, it, if the scriptures are saying that this is going to be days of great confusion, then yeah. I would got to rely on a book that just or rely on what the book is saying about it's going to be a confusing time. Yeah, you know, so absolutely. That's what I put my trust in. But at the same time, it's like I am watching a train wreck. Yeah, we all and, are. And it, it, it does. It, it, it has the ability sometimes to just tug on the heartstring a little bit, not to dissuade me to, you know, to take me off course. But it, it, it's just sad to watch. Well, brother, if you think this is something, and that's, wait, you know, that's, if, that's brother, where I'm at. If, if you think this is something, wait till you see the next phase. Wait till you see the homelessness that comes from people just sitting down collecting checks and not paying anything. Uh, Boy, (laughs) wait till you see the next phase, because this is not going to be because of a disease or anything like that. It's going to be because people chose to sit down and believe that money was free. Wait till you see that phase. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. That was wow. I'm going to take one more call, then we'll conclude it here. Take one more call. One moment.
Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please enter your host pin. When finished, press the pound key. All right, let's try this once more. Only a few more calls. Right here, one, a few more. All right, right. All right, all right. Let's you can see. Uh, uh, the pin you entered does not match the pin second. you have on file for your account. Please re enter right. your pin. One second, folks. One second, one second, one second. Uh. To start your show now, press 1 to hear important... Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Okay, last call, last call. I apologize for that last call. 8850 eight, area code. The computer just tripped out, but don't worry about it. I'm here. 850. Area code. You're live. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. You're the last call for today. Talk to us. Oh, I just want to know, do you, I want to get baptized. And do you have a problem close to Tallahassee? We do. Uh, send an email to gocbaptisms at gmail.com, Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, my I brother. I love the lessons. Praise the most high. Shalom. Shalom. Last call. 216 area code. Last call. Shalom. Shalom. Last call. All right. So that concludes our broadcast. 214 area code. Shalom. Hi. Last call. Shalom. 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 Yes. I'm going to try to make it a good one, too. Okay. Um, <laughs> Elder, this is Sister D calling from the, the Los Angeles body. Okay. I, How are you? Um, miss, I'm great. I miss the scripture uh, for uh, Edris to cast them out of their houses. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you for your feedback on why they took such a powerful chapter, you know, out of the Bible. I, I could kind of assume, but I would, I love your commentary and um, just would like for you to expound on that a little bit to why they took the Apocrypha out of the King James Bible. Okay. Okay, and then if you could give me that, that um, address scripture. Okay. Address is that second address 16. Starting at, uh, let's get it. Starting at 70, the 16th chapter, the 70th verse down to the end. Okay. Well, they should yeah, throw you I, out was, of um, I went looking for it. Right, yeah. right. I went looking for it on Google and I'm like, I can't really find the scripture. So they, yeah. they, it, they've kind of, it's really, Ed, the book of address is not really out there. Now yeah. I'm going to try my best to get the Apocrypha. I've been meeting the Apocrypha and um, see if maybe YouTube has someone who's actually reading the whole book of address on um, YouTube, but then to yeah. see some of the scriptures that I did find on there for, for, you know, I know you have talked about this one in the Academy for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Yeah. And just kind of going over what is online. I'm like, man, this book is powerful. It's they, yeah. those sneaky Edomites. They took it out. Yeah, they yeah they understood that there, there was no way to fudge or to philosophy away the detailed information in the apocrypha. It actually shows us the history from when from whence the white man gained power on earth, and that's the Book of Maccabees. They tried to hide the origin of their first empire. That's number one. Number two, like scriptures like this, you can clearly see that it, it tells us what Esau and the other nations would conspire, against, how they would conspire and what would be the end result against Jacob under the New World Order. They had to take that out. So it's in Edris. Even, even when they begin to put up white images and all that instead of the true images, black images of the Bible and in and, and our Hebrew records, that's in the Apocrypha. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a must have. 
Everything Christ talked about in Matthew 24 is broken down in detail within the book of Ezra. In detail. You take this second and third Baruch as well as other information like Enoch and it gives you a full-fledged understanding of who's fighting against us, what God's Esau and the Gentiles are following in these false religions and, and, the, and their rituals and rites. And not only does it expose them, the gods they follow, it, ex it exposes what they're doing on a regular basis as far as their, their governmental construct and what their intentions are under that construct. And, but it also teaches us in this book, the judgment on all those who have kept the information from us. Yes, it's, <laughs> so of course they looked at it and they, there's, it was nothing in this book that they could, they could see and say, you know what? We can use philosophy and, and lie this away. This information was so damning on their philosophy called Christianity that they had to separate it from our community altogether. And above all, they did it because what? They're of their father, the devil. Thank you. I appreciate it. Amen. Sister. Thank you. All right. Well, blessed, blessed. We're, we're over. That concludes our broadcast for today. Our I think it's our fifth Mark of the Beast report. They shall cast you out of your houses. And in particular, sister, the 73rd verse, 72nd verse of Edra 16, uh, Edra 16 and 72 is where it says, they shall cast you out of your houses. Okay. Which is really one step towards Zion. So I'm just letting you, I'm just showing you the political landscape the political landscape that would lead to exactly this. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the most high be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon see Zion. And thank you again, all of our Patreon uh, members and those who all continually support the church, the WADA. We have a brand new uh, lesson, uh, the Hyksos period, the time, Israel's time in Egypt, which I'm going into this coming Sunday. And, uh, Hey, I, of course we're going to do the Sabbath tomorrow, but I really, I, I really would appreciate it if you would continue to, to support us through the Academy, through the, uh, Patreon and thank you here. And also through our cash app, which is dollar sign G O C C one, four, four donate. It's right on your screen. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the most high be with you. Thank you, AC, for helping us set this up today. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon, of course, see Zion. Shalom. And thanks again, all my loyal Patreon members. You know, we have to uh, go out with a little music, right? to Zion. To Zion. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm a child of Israel. I heard the Give me the strength to stand today With my eyes to walk